What's up, Gretchen? What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up, Tawana? What's up? Gretchen, was you on yesterday? Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters. I just want to take this time to say how much I love you guys and how much I'd be so excited, ready to get on 12 noon. Even though things be like, bloop, 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 bloop. What's up, Dr. Will uh, Cox? Things be going, bloop, 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 and it be going real fast. Uh, what's up, Tawana Smith? No? Okay, well, you got to go back. You missed yesterday. Um... Um, so I'm excited about it. Today's another day. I want to talk about your identity. I want to talk about uh, low self-esteem and your identity. Wasn't feeling well? Well, I hope you're feeling awesome today. I hope you have a phenomenon, phenomenal day today. And I decree healing to your body from the crown of your head down to the sole of your feet. And we rebuke everything that's not like God over your bodies, over everybody's body in the name of Jesus. Well, listen. I'm excited because uh, we want to talk about identity. Uh, I want to talk about the identity of which God created you and I, in which God have created us, and we are not created in the identity of our mothers and fathers only, but we are, uh, we are created into our spiritual God, Father, God the Father, uh, and our big brother, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are created in the image of God, but we should have the characteristic of Jesus. I must say that again. We are created in the image of God, but I believe that every one of us should have the characteristics of Jesus Christ. Why? Because uh, uh, yesterday, um, um, identity, Jesus came to show us the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man can come unto the Father but by me. And the Bible said that if any man come, he comes as a thief and a robber. See, so Jesus came to be our, to be, to show us the characteristic of, of what a sonship look like in the kingdom. Uh, to show us what uh, kingdom integrity look like. All right. So here, uh, but we're made in the image and the likeness of God. We're made in his likeness, his image. And I know a lot of times our parents don't want us to say that. A lot of times people would say, no, 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 you can't say that. Well, I got biblical and scripture proof to back me up. I might look like my mother. I might favor my mother a lot, but my identity belongs to God. Why? Because it's in him that I live, it's in him that I move, and it's in him that I have all my beings. And you have to be very cautious when you allow people to disassimilate your kingdom identity. When they, when people would disassimilate your kingdom identity by saying, no, uh, we're your family. We all what you got in. It wouldn't be for me. No, let me say this. If you're right, if it wouldn't be for you, I wouldn't have came in the time that I came. But let's be very clear to all the mothers. Whether you wanted it or not, one way or another, Juan Belloy and whoever else would have been born. Now, we might not have been born with the DNA makeup that you have, but we were going to be born. Why? It's because God had ordained and destined for us to be in the earth realm for such a time as this. None of us are here before our time. We're in the timing of God. 
time and of God. Every one of us here, we are in the time and of God. We're where God wants us to be, how God wants us to be. Uh, we're looking the way God wants us to look, even though, even myself, there's some changes. If I could change some things, I would change some things. But how be ever, God created us in the DNA makeup that he did. So it's in him that we live, it's in him that we move, and it's in him that we have all our beings. I have a father, I have a mother, but uh, my identity is not based just on them. My identity is based the moment I got saved, the moment I gave God my life, the moment that I confess him to be Lord, accept him in my heart, and um, I conf I, uh, I confess with my mouth, I believe with my heart, and I accept him in my life to be my Lord and personal Savior, I became saved. And when I became saved, the old man will pass away and all things become new. All right? Everything about us become new. I need you to be encourage yourself that you are in the timing of God. And guess what? L ladies and gentlemen, if we are in the timing of God and we are right where God wants us, right here in this pandemic, he created us for this pandemic and not no other pandemic pandemic. He didn't give us the pandemic of 1918, 1958, uh, 1968, nor the 2008 one, but he, he created us for this one. And those of us that was born before 68, you were created for that pandemic as well as this one. Those that was born only for this one, you are created for this pandemic. You was created and you are in the time and the orchestration of God. Don't let nobody psych you. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't nobody run a muck on you. Don't let nobody hook wind you. You are in the timing of God. God knew exactly what he's doing when he created you for such this time. And let me tell you something. You are such in the timing of God that God himself has told time to obey you. You are such in the timing of God that God himself made time obey you. Come on. I need somebody to get excited right there. I want to say that. I'm going to say that again. You are so much in time with God that God made time obey you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Are you hearing me? You are so much in time and in sync with God. And you're so much in the right time that time is obeying you. Time is not going to allow death to come and take you up out of him. Uh, the Bible says in Psalms 91, he said, A thousand shall fall at your left side and ten thousand at thy right hand. But the Bible declares, It shall not come nigh thee. Why? Because he withhold us with his right hand. Psalms 118 and 19 says, The arm of the Lord is strong and it do win wars. Come on. Are you hearing me? You are in the timing of God. So you now have to tell everything that's in your time how to be obedient as time is being obedient. Identity. God has given you an identity. God has given you an identity. You have a kingdom identity. If your mother don't uh, now acknowledge you, if your father don't acknowledge you, you have a kingdom identity. Stop struggling with, stop struggling with validation issues when God have already validated you. Let me say something to you. Let me say something to you. So many of us want the validation of our mothers and our fathers. So many of us want validation from the bishops and the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the pastors and the teachers and the superintendent, the, uh, uh, the state mother, the national mother, the jurist district evangelist. Come on, you want everybody's, you want everybody's uh, validation, but you have never sought after God's validation. I'll prove it to you. You ready for it? Here we go. And it's free. Matthew's the sixth chapter and the 33rd verse. The Bible said, first seek ye the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and these things shall be added unto you. Huh? Huh? First seek ye the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and these things shall be what? Added unto you. What will be added? Your identity, your wealth, your good name. The, the, the opportunity to walk in the advancement of life, the, the ability to stand in the face of adversity and tell the enemy, I'm still strong. The, the Bible says if a man faint in the days of adversity is because his strength is small. But the Bible also teaches us that in our weakness, God's strength is made perfect. So even when you're in your days of adversity and it seems as if I don't know what in the world I'm about to do. I don't know how I'm going to come out of where I am. I don't know. You stand firm and tell the enemy I'm operating in kingdom identity. You can tell sickness. You can tell disease. You can tell infirmities. You can tell poverty. You can tell lack. You are here, but because you're here and I'm in the timing of God, 
Guess what, devil? Guess what, enemy? Guess what, sickness? Guess what, infirmities? Guess what, diseases? Because I'm in the timing and the sinking of God, you are subject to the time that is subject to me. Time allowed you how long <clears throat> you're going to be here. This grass pollen is kicking my butt this year. Oh, you hear me? You have the time. I want you to get encouraged. I want you to be in power with that. I want you to tell the enemy, tell the enemy, I'm in the timing of God. I'm so accurate in God's timing. I'm so validated in God's timing. I'm so moved in God's time. I'm so orchestrated in God's time. I'm walking in the timing of God. I'm breathing in the time of God. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm hearing, I'm tasting, I'm authenticating. I'm moving. <laughs> In the timing and the sinking of God. Right now, you not got to know that your identity make you operate in the time of God and not just in the frame of God. Are you hearing me? You're in the frame of God. I'm in the frame of this phone. Everything outside of this frame, you can't see. See, frame and time work together. The Bible says that God framed the world by the words of his mouth. God spoke and the world was existing, was framed by his word. You can frame your day by the words out of your mouth. The words that I speak are my law of good. They will produce the desired results because they're operated on by a power greater than I am. Good alone goes from me and good alone returns to me. Everything I say is for myself and about myself. There is one life. That life is what? God. And that life is what? Perfect. That life is what? My life right now. See, all of that identity, all of that is bringing it, this form and developing. Our, God made me a master. Nothing outside of me would allow to master that power that's inside of me. It is now done. It is complete because of this every day and every way. I'm richer and richer and richer and richer. I now express life, eternal life is mine right now. You're in the timing of God. You are so much in the timing of God that the enemy is afraid of you. So the enemy will give you inferiority. The enemy will try to bring fear up in your life. The enemy will try to cause you to walk in rams of doubt and unbelief of your own self. See, the enemy don't mind you believing in God. The enemy don't mind you believing in God or believing the supreme being. He just don't want you to believe in yourself. He wants you to doubt yourself and not believe yourself. The enemy don't have a problem with you even trusting God. But he wants you to stop trusting yourself. Because the moment you stop trusting, you start you trusting God, then God will tell you what to do. And you will trust yourself that you, that you can make it happen. So the enemy says, I know I can't stop them from trusting God, but I can stop them from trusting themselves. So what I'll do, I'll create uh, chaos. I'll create rhetorics. I'll create um, scandals. I'll create um, all kind of um, moments in their life to make them fail to trust themselves. What profit a man to trust in a source but can't trust himself? What benefit do a man have to have the key to the bank and no one working in the bank anymore? The bank is closed, but you have the key. Let me show you what not trusting God. Trusting God, but not trusting yourself. Let me let me show you what's what what trusting God is versus not and not trusting yourself to trust God but not trust yourself let me tell you something you are like that man that has the key to the bank that have one billion dollars in it and there's nobody in the world everybody in the world is gone and you have the key to the bank but here's the problem you live cross town and you are fearful of the fact if I come out this door, being the last man on the earth, I might die too. Or you that man that live right directly across from the bank and you got the key, but won't go in that bank when everybody in the world is dead. There's nobody in the world but you. You have the right to be the only billionaire left alive or that exists. But you won't get up off of, out your house and go cross the street because of fear that everyone else died because they came out of their houses. And you don't want to come out because you are fearful that you're going to die. You don't even trust the fact that I can, I can run fast enough across that street and unlock that door, get in and lock it back. And if I never get back to my house, I'm locked inside the bank. Or, matter of fact, let me pack up all my food 
that I need. And let me drag it in a bed sheet. Put it like Santa Claus on my back. And I'll go and lock myself in the bank. And I'll stay there until the world is repopulated again or a change comes. I'd rather be locked up in the bank with the billion dollars than be locked up inside of a house. Watch this. That I have no, nothing but a little food. Watch this. I'll show you something. Well, that's, that's the, I'm not getting the point. Let me help you. Number one, that house that you live in, it lasts for a minute. It'll die in a few. It'll fade away because it's only made to, for a human to inhabit, to, to, ha to live in. A bank is supposed to be what? Safeguarded, safeguard proof. Why would you settle to stay in your own zone where you have no trust of your own self and why and, and live there and decay instead of you just grab some food and stuff, put on a big bag, a big old bag like Santa Claus and Santa Claus your way across that street. Unlock that bank because no one there to charge you because you got the key. Unlock the bank, lock yourself up in there and you're in a safe place because you where all the money is and where it's safe to reside in. See, that's what's trusting God, leaving the zones of your comfort place, leaving the place where you are very comfortable at and get to the place where God has safety, where it's not easy to break in, where, where that's not easy to uh, get in. Now watch this. Not only do you have the key, Sister Pam, for the, for the bank, but you also have the key to get inside the vault. If they blow up the bank, you can get inside the vault and hide. And the way votes are made today, it got all kind of oxygen and airproof stuff inside of it. All kind of electrical things. I used to work for a cash checking company. And we had a, um, a room that was made out of metal. They had everything. They had a cell phone in there. They had electrical wires in there, a socket. They had an air conditioner and a heater in there. Just in case if somebody tried to grab us, we can run into the safe in the what's called lock it and call the policeman. And then there was a camera where we can see what's going on in the store. So if that happened in a little check cashing business, how much more of security do you think that's inside that, that bank? See, trusting God is secure, but failing to trust yourself will keep you from keep you from getting in that safe place. Keep you from walking into the identities that God is calling you to walk into. See, God don't want you to walk as your mother and your father. God wants you to walk as a kingdom son and a kingdom daughter. God wants you to operate in the fullness of his power. God wants you to operate in, in thy kingdom come, thy will be done. God wants you to operate in the mere fact that when you get sick, you can speak to your own self. Because the Bible says, physician, heal thyself. Come on. I made you, I've given you power to get wealth. So if you're lacking of money, if you're lacking of finances, I've given you power, the ability to gain wealth, kingdom identity. I gave you power to become the son of God when you can't be the daddy's son, you can't be the mama's son. You don't, you don't please nobody, but God said, I've given you power to be my son, to be my daughter. Stop looking for the validation of people. Stop looking for people to validate you. Stop looking for people to try to tell you that they love you. Because see, the very person that tell you they love you right now, deep in their heart, they're saying, I can't stand you. The very person that says, I got your back, is the very person that set you up to be killed in shadow waters. The very person told you, I'm praying for you, might be praying for you, but praying for you to die. Pray, praying for you to get cancer, praying for you to go blind, praying for you. So you be careful when someone tell you, I'm praying for you. Because praying for you may, might have some other adjectives connected to that you. I'm, they're praying for you, but they're praying for you to have a car accident the next time you get in your car. So that they can have what they think you have. And when it, once you're dead and gone, they realize there's nothing to you, no way. Because you're just living an imposter anyway. you just just faking it until you make it. Because you didn't understand the kingdom identity. Because see, when I'm weak, yet I'm strong. Why? Because God's word said that. He said, in my weakness, his strength, whose strength? God's strength is made perfect. Not mama's strength, not daddy's strength, not boyfriend, not girlfriend, not your lover's strength. But the strength of the almighty God is made perfect. If I fall in the days of adversity, the Bible says, it's because my strength has became weak. So I stand today to tell you, my brother and my sister, that in spite of what you're going through, the power of your strength lies in the power of you praying. The power of your identity, to know your identity, the power of walking in kingdom validation is, is having a prayer life with God.
going down in, on your knees and just a little talk with Jesus, he'll make everything all right. A prayer will get to turn, the fire get to burning, but just a little talk with Jesus, he'll make everything all right. Come on, if you want your identity to stand strong and stay in light and have a loud sound to your identity, I promise you, you got to go down on your knees in prayer and have a talk with God. Tell God all about it. Say, it's me, it's me, oh God, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother, it's not my father, it's not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, oh God. Here am I, bowed down to Mother's Earth as an empty pitcher at your flowing fountain, asking you, God, to fill me one more time and again. Come on. See, the kingdom of God needs you to come and cry out to him. The kingdom of God needs you to cry even when things are going well. Why? Well, I cry for mercy for those that are going through when all is well for me. Because what I pray for other people and what I, I intercede for other people that when my time, my downtime come, then guess what? God will wake intercessors all over the world that don't even know my name. Will start praying for me because they will see my face. They will start praying for me because God will drop them in my spirit and say, go down to New Orleans and touch Gretchen. And they're all the way in Africa. And, and in Africa, they're spending two and three hours praying for Gretchen. Why? It's because I just heard the Lord say Gretchen. So I just start praying God touch Gretchen all over the world. And every every person got a Gretchen in their name is being set free and delivered. Why? Because that's the kind of God he is. When you pray for someone else, God makes somebody on the other side of the country, the other side of the world, come and deal with you and pray for you and call you in prayer. When mama won't get up and pray for you, when daddy won't get up and pray for you because they're too busy for themselves. Bible says, David says, um, he says, um, when my mother and my father have forsaken me, then the Lord shall take me up. How many of you ready? to come up out of your mother and father's shadow and walk into the shadows of God. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. I'm trying to get you to the shadows of God. I'm trying to get you to the place where God wants you to be. God wants you to no longer walk in nobody's shadow, but walk in the shadows of the king. The song say, take me to the king. Huh? God want to bring you to a place where the king resides. Esther said that very well. She said, I'm going to go and see the king, but the king haven't called for me. I'm going to go and see the king. The king haven't beckoned for me. I'm going to go and see the king, but the king have not, have, have, don't even know that I am coming. Because there is something going on in my family that I myself need to stand before the king and have a conversation before this king and tell this king, wait a minute, you don't understand. We done been through enough. We done been through hard storms. We have been through trials and tribulations. We done been through uh, heartaches and pain, sickness and diseases. You don't understand that we've been the castaway for so long. And so when she got herself prepared, she put everybody on a fast. She said, I'm going. She said, but if I perish, let me perish. But I'm going to see this king. And because of her beauty and because of her prayer life and because everybody was praying and everybody was on one accord, when she got before the king, instead of the king kill her because he didn't request her, because in that day and time, if you came before the king without a request, you were supposed to be stoned. You were supposed to be cast into prison. But she said, listen, I'm not going on my behalf. I'm going on the behalf of the people. And God granted her favor. And when she got to the king and the king saw her, the king saw her, he turns around and he said, come. He said, what is wrong with thee? And she began to pour out her heart into the king. And the king kept her inside with him. And the very thing that the enemy, the very gallow that the enemy had prepared for, for uh, Esther's uncle, Look what happened, y'all. Because somebody stood in the gap with a kingdom identity. Somebody stood in the gap knowing who they were. Somebody stood in the gap knowing that God is the author and the finisher of my faith. They stood there, guess what? Esther, cousin, uncle, and, um, and family, and all of them survived because somebody stood up in kingdom identity. I'm trying to encourage somebody today. You have an identity that's waiting on you. You have a time that's waiting on you. You have a kingdom time that's waiting. You are in the proper time of God. Are you hearing me? Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, you are in the timing of God. How many of you are ready to tell the enemy, I know what time it is? Come on, won't you do me a favor? Look at your watch and tell the enemy, I know what time it is. I know that I'm in the high time to be blessed. What time is it? It's blessing time. Why should you die when others are being made whole? Why should you when why should you die when others are, are living? Why should you be sick when others are being made whole? Why should you be rich when others are being poor? Why you should be down when God's calling you up? Come on. Are you hearing me? Look at your watch again and say, It's my time. Sure, Pastor Shirley Caesar got a song that says, It's my time. And is in what? God's hand. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Almighty. And God turns the heart of the king to whomsoever he pleased. Come on. Forgive. Stop looking at your past. Let things go. Forgive. Let people live let they live. 
build your identity in the kingdom. Let the devil know I'm, I'm, I'm in pursuit of my purpose. I'm driven by desire. I'm highly motivated and I'm destined to succeed. Let me tell you something why I want you to hold on to your, to your identity. Genesis 1 and 27. Genesis 1 and 27 said, God created man in his own image. In his, in, watch this. Wait a minute. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Let, let me go back to it. So God created Juan in Juan's image. But the image came out of the image of God, created he Juan. And he created Juan to be male, not female. He created the Apostle Dewan Jackson to be female and not male. Then I created he them. Did you just get what I said? Every way, every person, how you look right now, God created you in that image. But he took you out of the image of God. He took you out of his image with the, the way you look right now. He took you out of that image. Scripture said God created man in his own image. In your image. And then he took your image out of his image that he created you. And he made you a male and he made her a female. Watch this. Jeremiah 29 and 11 said, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for warfare and not evil. To give you future and a hope. I'm going to read it again. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for well, I'm sorry, I said warfare. Welfare and not evil to give you a future and a hope. I'll read it again. For I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah 29 and 11, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not evil to give you a future and a hope. Wait a minute. God said, I know my thoughts. You don't need to worry about your mom and daddy. If your mom and daddy never validate you, get over that. Get over that hump. Get over that. Get over that. Because if they've never been validated, you won't have a legal validation. No way. If your mother have never been validated by her mother and her father, she can't validate you, baby. If your daddy don't know anything about validation, he cannot validate you, son. He will give you what he think a man is that can damage you for the rest of your life. But if any man be in Christ, he become a new creature. Old things are passed away. Come on. And all things become new. Jeremiah 29 11 said, I know my thoughts that I think towards you. It's good. Not evil, but it has an expected end. You got a future and a hope. But it's in God. Stop allowing people to give you their identity. Stop allowing church folks to give you identity. God has given you an identity. God has given you a reservoir from the kingdom. God has given you rivers of living waters. Out of your belly shall flow rivers, the scripture says, of living waters. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I form you in the womb, I already knew you. Your validation would I thank God my father could never validate me. I thank God that my mother could not validate me. I thank God for my grandparents teaching me and telling me the things that I was going to become. I thank God for family members and my mother finally told me what, what she thought of me, what she wanted good for my life. I thank God for that. But Jeremiah 1 and 5 have always been my favorite scripture besides Psalms 1. He says, before I form you, I knew you. And before you was born, I consecrated you and I appointed you a prophet to the nation. Before you, before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew you. Before you was born, I ordained you. You was ordained for this time. You are in the timing of God. You are in the sink of God. Genesis 1 and 27 say God so created man in his own image. In the image God created he him. Male and female he created them. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know my thoughts that I think towards you. They're good, not evil, but it has an expected end. You got a future and a hope. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before you, I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you was born, I consecrated you. I appointed you as a prophet to what? The nation. You're not a prophet just to your mom and daddy. 
You're not a prophet just to where you grew up at. You're not a prophet just to the people you know or you work with, but you're called to the nation. That's why I'm telling you, you're in the timing of God. You're in the timing of God. Your pain not going to kill you. Your, your, your brokenness is not going to kill you. Your molestation is not going to kill you. Your abandonment is not going to kill you. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old man, the old thing, the old thought have passed away. And behold, he has become new. 2 Chronicles 2, 5 and 17 said, If any man be in Christ, you're a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Come on. Tell your neighbor, I'm, I'm new. I'm walking in a new time, in a new season, in a new realm of God. Are you hearing me? Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, if we had ever needed the Lord, we need him right now. Right now. Right now. But why are you not so hyped today? Well, I had a press session at 11 o'clock. We, we, we gathered at today at the um, uh, Welcome All Park. Some pastors today gathered up at Welcome All Park. And um, we was out there praying under the tent, under the canopy. And we, and we had a high time in the Lord. So I kind of lost my voice because I was crying, we was weeping. And then some brothers were playing basketball. They saw us praying. Some of them came over because it was a whole bunch of pastors, men. And some of them came over there and the word of the Lord came. And, and the pastor asked us to pray for each other. And we was praying for the young men. And the young men were sitting there. So my heart is overwhelmed. My voice is because I was hollering and crying and telling God thank you. Because one of the young men said I needed that. It was a spontaneous moment. I got a text message. Hey, bro, what you doing? I said, nothing. He said, man, me just at Welcome All Park. I said, what's going on? He said, man, we just about to go pray. It's about six of us. We just going to go pray at the park. So I was already in that heaven. That's the way you see the timing of God. I was dropping somebody off in Union City. And Welcome All Park is right there in back of College Park, Union City area. So I ran over there. It took me about three minutes. I got there. I'm like, it was there. It was First, we start clowning and joking, and then all of a sudden, we start praying. I said, let me get to my spot to find me a spot to um, get on my line. Be busy, but don't be busy doing nothing. Be busy doing something in the kingdom. Y'all continue to pray for me as I pray for you. And remember this, I got a kingdom identity. I'm not, I'm not my mother's son. I'm not my father's son. I'm the son of the most high God. The almighty God got me in control. And the almighty God got you in control. Now look, do me a favor. Never look down on somebody unless you're planning on picking them up. If you miss me on the air on Monday, if Monday come and you don't see me on the air, you know what I want you to do? Look up in the air, because I'm wearing my rapture clothes. I'm living rapture ready. I'm going home to be with the Lord. Amen. God bless and keep you. It's my prayer. And remember this, I love you. If no one ever tell you that they love you again, from me to you, I love each and every one of you that's watching me. And those that will tune in later to watch me, I love you. God bless you.